Welcome to Verbal Pick Radio, where we give you a verbal image of life, and we are everyday people. And today, we're going to give everyday people a bit of knowledge uh, pertaining to um, Spain, right? But I'm talking about Spain prior to 1492. Now, also, I want to get into... Uh, the book that was written in Aramaic, uh, titled the Zohar, um, that was brought to Spain by the Moors, right? Although they claim that they don't know who wrote the book or whatnot, we know uh, if it's Aramaic or Arabic coming to Spain, it's a it's the Moors or coming through a Muslim uh, uh, perspective, let's say, right? Now this is. From the Kabbalah Society, the three cultures of Spain, right? By Zev, son of Shimon Halevi, right? Or Zev ben Shimon Halevi, right? And also, we have to tie this into Nick Cannon as well. Um, because when you're in the conscious community or you're uh, relaying knowledge or you're attempting to make a... Um, a person that sleep conscious uh, to things pertaining to his surroundings and also to himself, then you're 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 in a chess game. It's not checkers. You can't. Uh, I'm gonna tell you why, right? You can't um, enter into this thing. Uh, looking to be um, uh, for popularity. You can't enter in this thing uh, looking for fans, you know, because why? The truth, some people can't handle the truth. Uh, in a sense, the truth upsets a lot of people. It makes some folks mad. It uncovers things that people tend to want to uh, have kept covered. So when you get into the truth game, you'll acquire a lot of enemies, um, you know, uh, especially as your your numbers grow as far as your followers or whatever, subscriptions and uh, on YouTube or wherever your platform is. A lot of times you'll get a lot of negative feedback. Folks get upset at what you're saying because you're going against the grain or you're going against the narrative that people set out. Uh, to hide certain things and now you are uh, uncovering it and, and discovering new truths and new facts to where to some it's a problem right now uh, when celebrities such as Nick Cannon get involved right it's a it's a, a myriad of things that comes to mind right one would be why are you getting involved in this when we all know that most of the platforms that these celebrities are on or whose uh, label they signed to or who managing them or whatnot, whose company that they're under, who they signed the contract to, we know that uh, you're going to do the do their bidding at the end of the day, especially when they start taking up talking about pulling money from up under you, right? So we know that. So when you get involved into um, sharing knowledge or consciousness right you're suspected uh another one is is this person uh a member of the boule right because the 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 stigmatization of the boule is that uh by definition uh that they are the advisors to the king meaning there are the black people who go back and relay to their white masters uh, information on what's going on and what's important to the black community. And, not, and a lot of times, once that information is shared, then they know how to go in and uh, uh, take control of the reins. They know how to go in and curve it or turn it this way, but as long as it don't reach its uh, desired goal. right? So you'll always have that. Uh, uh, in the back of people, conscious community minds, like, what's your reason for being here, right? 
Or one could be that your purpose is to gather as many people as you can, build them up, and then tear them down. Right. So when you see people backlashing against Nick Cannon and you're saying, or you're seeing the backlash that's against Nick Cannon and you say, why, why is, you know, they doing him like that? He was just wrong. And maybe he said some wrong things about the Jewish community that um, he shouldn't have said. Right. And it's like, it's not about uh, opinions in a sense. It's about presenting your Facts that you research, and if they find any error in what you said, then they'll come with their, uh, they'll fact check your proof, but also they'll come with their facts and proof, and then we sit down as men and discuss where we felt like uh, we were wrong, right? Okay, but that didn't happen with Nick. Nick was treated like a slave. Boy, you get on out there and apologize. But they didn't come and say, well, look, sir, let's sit down and let, let's vet each other's facts and see where we stand, right? Diplomatically, no. Nick went and kowtowed and cursed and whatever, bowing and uh, apologies that you can imagine, right? But okay. And that's, so that's what that is. Another part of that I didn't like personally, right? Uh, because uh, Nick Cannon had... The minister out of South Central on his show, Kenny Class, at one time, Tony Muhammad. Now, Brother Tony Muhammad was saying that, well, you know, 80, 80 million of our tax dollars goes to uh, Israel, but black people who built it, man, built this country gets nothing, right? Nick didn't expound on that. I'm like, mm, okay, okay, well, let's let's go on. Then uh, the minister for Arakan in the Criterion speech when they said who, and he said, you mean the imposter Jew, right? Now, when Mr. Farrakhan says that, then they're not going to say, Mr. Farrakhan, you come out and apologize, so and so. No, uh, there'll be an open debate. And two men debate each other. It's not uh, one person saying, I'm the authority over you and you must do this or else. That's not how this thing goes. So Nick should have sought some advice from the minister on how to properly address and handle this situation. I mean, coming from a black person's perspective, you know, coming from a, the, a, a Moorish perspective, right? He should have, coming from a Hebrew Israelite perspective, seek ye some counseling first, Nick, before you wound up hurting more people while you're trying to save your uh, assets with uh, your colonizer is what we're saying. Okay. So anyway, we're getting into this, right? This is the, the three cultures of Spain, right? Spain is a particularly interesting country. From the point of view of the three spiritual traditions of the West, even though Religion was coming up out of the east, out of Africa, but it was brought to Spain. But we'll continue. That is Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. But first, let us look at the area prior to the Spanish Golden Age, right? The Iberian Peninsula is a very uh, mountainous country. I almost cut off from the rest of Europe. By the uh, Pyrenees, but with a close proximity to Africa, right? Okay, which was all that was populated by what melanated people at that time. During the Ice Age, the peninsula was occupied by prehistoric settlers who did the remarkable paintings of the bisons, meaning that. During the Ice Age, before Pangaea, when it was all one uh, land mass where you can just walk and travel all over the world before it, it, it before the tectonic plates broke up and drifted. And you notice Africa is the only continent that's rooted. So it's still in its place from its conception is what I'm saying. It didn't move, right? Okay. 
During the Ice Age, the peninsula was occupied by prehistoric settlers who did the remarkable paintings of bison. People and various animals in the caves of Altamira, A-L-T-A-M-R-R-A, after they came, the Basquez, who spoke a language which which has no Indo-European relation whatsoever. But if these groups may, no, these groups, it says may have come up from Africa, but these groups came up from Africa, which was then joined at the Straits of Gibraltar, right? That's all uh, Moorish territory, let's say. Let's put it that way. Around fifth, around 1,500 B.C., the Celts right, came from Central Europe, which was another uh, black Europeans at the time. And then they spread into France, Britain, and Spain. Right? That's where you get the Celts and all those black traditions, right? Later they came into Spain because uh, the Visigoths was coming down from uh, Europe uh, conquering and the Moors took Spain back from the Visigoths. But that's a history. You can go uh, research that. But let me, we, let's get into this though. This term defines the level of a city-based society. As against an agriculture or hunter gatherer community. About 1000 BC, the Phoenicians arrived from the Middle East and set up trading posts, followed by the, uh, uh, the Carthaginians, Greeks, and later Romans, who occupied and colonized the country, right? Now, here come, now, now he finna, he's introducing the Jews. The Jews appeared according to an old tradition with the Phoenicians, right? But most were there as a result of the destruction of the Jewish state in the early centuries of the common era. They came as prisoners of war, exiles, and slaves. Over time, they became part of the general population, living and working as equals at every level. Bam. There you go. There you go. The, meaning that if the if they came with the Phoenicians, right, the first Jews uh, origin was melanated people or black people, right? The the the, the white Jews uh, or didn't uh, get into the play until they came uh, out of uh, Europe. Near the Caucasus Mountains area. But the religion is for every man and woman, if you choose to become Jewish, no matter what um, your race is. We'll put it like that. Under Rome, Spain was transformed from a barbar a barbaric tribal patchwork into a well organized uh, providence. Right. Okay, so under Rome, Spain was transformed from a barbaric tribal patchwork into a well organized province unified by Roman municipalities, roads, and laws. Now, whenever you see municipalities, roads, and laws, this letting you know that the Moors was setting up Rome. They were in Rome. You know, they they were creating the roads. They were creating the laws. It became a rich economy with a high standard of culture, bringing in cultures. The native tongues gave way to a vulgar Latin or the native tongues gave way to a bastard language. But it reads, the native tongue gave way to a vulgar Latin that was to later become Spanish. Right, because you know Spanish came from Latin. Okay, we get into something. Aside from the Catholic Church's attempts to at converting and isolating the Jews, it was a peaceful and prosperous land, right? Because at the time, the Jews or the Hebrews and the Muslims were getting along. They had no problem with each other. Everything was fine. 
You know, they matter of fact, they had, why did they have, you got to look at, why did they have similar traditions? Why were they dietary laws similar? I mean, you got to go and research all of that, but they were very, very similar. <clears throat> Has the Roman Empire gradually lost its vitality and decayed? But it should read as the Roman Empire gradually lost its um, fertility. It says vitality, but virile and decayed, meaning at that time when the when the uh, Europeans uh, was coming in, um, conquering and ransacking Rome, uh, some of the uh, the, vi- the 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 visit gods and the gods tribes that were coming in. When they were uh, vandalizing and setting up this new new government, right? A lot of um, marriage wasn't um, was starting to uh, wane, um, and they, they had and they start having more of a a uh, man and man relationship and woman woman relationship, and children wasn't being born, and over time, uh, Rome. Just like uh, Greece um, started to decay, right? So the Germanic barbarian tribes, again, they they're actually saying the the, the gods, visit gods, and those barbaric tribe, barbarian tribes, burst through the overextended frontiers in Central Europe. To overrun the continent about 300 AD. One tribe called the Vandals. That's where you get the word. They were Vandals. Led the invasion of the Iberia. Followed by others. Now they created vandalism. That wasn't. Some of these. See you got to understand. Some of these terms and, 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 and actions. Wasn't for Africans or indigenous or more. Though you might say African American. You say black folk. A lot of what we, after we were conquered, we learned these behaviors and how to be, you know, the old saying, um, uh, if you can't beat them, join them, would apply, right? Okay, they set up a warlord state, which is remembered in the name Anduslia, which is A-N-D-A-L-U-S-I-A. The Visa or Western Gods, as the Germanics were called, became the governing elite of a resentful population. Mutual friction was increased by the Catholic Church, which regarded the Gods' form of Christianity. See, let me read that again. Mutual friction was increased, right, by the Catholic Church, which regarded the which regarded the Gods' form of Christianity as heretical. Because the gods was practicing a form of Christianity. The the Catholic Church was coming a form of Christianity. After the defeat of the Moors, they was trying to find a way, how can we unify your form of Christianity, i.e. what they were saying, pagan worshiping, with the Catholic form of Christianity, i.e. what they got out of uh, Egypt. It was only one. It was only when one of their kings converted to the Latin rite that their rule was reluctantly accepted. However, the persecution of Jews continued. Right, they were still killing Jews and Muslims because at the time, uh, these black folks being killed. Right, the Gothic way of selecting a king was not by bloodline, but election. See, the original way of how they was doing it in indigenous, a lot of it was by bloodline, right? You had the blue bloods. And to this day, uh, a lot of the presidents, though, uh, they'll trace their bloodline back to a king or a queen. All right. Let me read that again. The Gothic way of selecting a king was not by bloodline but election, which meant a continuous struggle over power between the barons. This led to an un- this led to an unstable situation in which personal feuds dominated politics. Nothing new under the sun. 
a crucial situation occurred when one of the kings raped the beautiful daughter of his then governor of Gothic North Africa, right? The father took his revenge by inviting the Islamic Moors to stage a punitive raid, right? Now, this is, now, it's, it's kind of complicated because they're saying that how the Moors came in to uh, conquer uh, Spain was because one of the gods uh, raped the king's beautiful daughter of his then governor of Gothic, North Africa, right? But this letting you know, coming out of Africa, North Africa is letting you know that, you know, there was some semblance of trade and business dealings going on between the Goths and the Moors, right? Okay, so the father took his revenge by inviting the Islamic Moors to stage a punitive raid. The Muslims finding the Gothic aristocracy in the disunited condition decided to take over the whole peninsula, right? But what they got to realize is it was still m- melanated people, whether you say they were uh, Moors uh, going up against black Rome or Moors going up against the black Celts or Moors going as the, the point is the Caucasian Jews had enlightened. It's just not getting into the picture. Let's put it like that. Okay. They were greatly assisted by the Jews who not only opened city gates, but garrisoned and administered the occupied zones while the Muslims pressed on into France. For this service, the Jews were given privilege, not granted to their erstwhile Christian prosecutors, right? Because the Jews were being prosecuted by the Christians. But we'll go back and we'll get into that at a later date on why the one sect of white people or saying the Catholics were against the Jews at that time, the persecution. What started the infeuding between those two groups? At 1.7% of the Roman Empire population was Jewish. They owned property and land and practiced every profession until they were restricted by the Christianized authorities to petty trading and usury, right? So that's meaning petty trading and usury. Usury is, is considered a interest. The only thing that they can, um, and, they, and they, that's why they say, okay, today the Jews were known for that, but um, that could have been a punishment Right for the Jews for lining themselves up with the Muslims, um, you only can do this function of work. You only can uh, trade, and and we'll let you charge interest on things. And they mastered that. So today you have compound interest. Banking was forbidden by the church under the Moors. The Jews flourished in relative freedom and became a very useful middle class to the Arab ruling caste. There you go. All that was black at the time. But now now you're getting it to the point to where the, the Jews, Hebrews, uh, or we could say the Caucasian Jews, getting it to the point to where they being protected and and worked with with the Moors, right? They now they having dealings with each other, right? Now this is because now we're getting closer to time period. We're getting closer to fourteen ninety two is what I'm saying. We getting closer to fourteen ninety two. We working this thing because reason being is because in fourteen ninety two, uh, Columbus had to find a home for the Jews. Right, and they and they expelled the Moors out of Spain once uh, the um, 
how can I say, the once the Visigoths who later became the Spaniards, also it took place in Portuguese too. Once the Caucasians got up in there and they started taking over rule, they started becoming the uh the leaders uh after the war or whatnot, then they start running Spain. They tried to. They tried to uphold the system that the Moors set up in Spain and they tried to continue on that system uh out of what they learned from the Moors. Cause you gotta remember at one time all of them came about the Caucasus Mountains out of the caves. So they had no laws, they had no roadways, they didn't know how to um uh, uh, bury their dead. They did not cook their food. The Moors taught them all of that. Right? And so after the Moors taught them that, then when when they expelled, when they uh, defeated the Moors and expelled them out of it, basically what they were saying was, okay, thank you for your teaching us how to do all this, but you can leave. We can take it from here. We got it. And matter of fact, to hide these, these facts, we'll start Reversing things, we'll start saying that the Moors was hideous. We'll start lying on the Moors, but we'll try to erase their history so they could never come back and say, "Hey, look what we did." You know, we're not gonna put it in the books. We're not gonna, you know what I mean? So that's how that took. That's how it took place, right? Okay, as such, they were once more. An integral part of a new cosmopolitan civilization. Thus it was that Spain became the home of three spiritual traditions. The impact of Islam was dramatic. It brought in the culture of the ancient world that had been absorbed in the Muslim conquest of the Greek speaking and Oriental lands. Many ideas, techniques, and objects forgotten or unknown to the West were introduced to Spain. Right by the Moors, black folks. Right, music, architecture, astronomy, as well as chemistry, mathematics, and medicines were now studied. Where a century before, only a barbaric culture had been dominant. Meaning, before that, it was just when they when the gods and Visigoths took over, they had no refinement, they had no architecture, no music, no medicine. They were just in there ruling the people. With just brute force and um, ignorance, right? Okay. Arabic became the vernacular, although Latin Spanish was still spoken in the Christian home. However, many Catholics converted to Islam out of convenience to avoid tax or take advantage of the situation as no Christian could rise to great status in the Muslim society except as a soldier, right? Now, they avoided tax. Why? Because it's, 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 Muslims not allowed to charge other Muslims a tax. That wasn't our system. That just was a, that was a way for the Jewish community to sustain themselves by putting the tax or interest on something so they can have a means of survival. But that wasn't uh, that wasn't our way. We weren't supposed to charge each other a tax until this day we as Muslims we're not supposed to charge each other a tax. Or take advantage of the situation, you know, as no Christian could rise to great status in the Muslim society except as a soldier, right? Meaning and meaning the you have these Caucasians coming about the Caucasus Mountains, right? Taking on a form of Gothic Christianity mixed with Catholicism, because they have to find a way to bring them together and, and still keep their pagan traditions as celebrating the winter solstice, the summer solstice, Easter. Uh, and all the paganism behind the holidays, right? They had to keep that intact, right? So under Islam, all, you could you wasn't finna get into power with those ideologies, but you could be a soldier and fight for the land in which you were staying on. Okay, now, but I just had to put that in perspective. In contrast, the Jews were not regarded as potentially hostile. Indeed, many Muslim rulers preferred Jewish advisors who they could trust. This was because of the tribal tradition of deadly competition between rival clans in the Arab culture. 
the Jews were neutral and could be eliminated with impunity if found wanting. Out of this delicate position came a number of important counselors, uh, doctors, and even Jewish generals who protected and advanced their own community's interests, right? See, the start in these.